Guys, let me tell you where church is. It's right there where you're, you're meeting with us. It's your little group of people around your television set right now. That's the church. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's the church. It's you. You're the revival capital of the world on your street right now. He took us and diasporaed us. He sowed us as seed. We talk about the Jews and the diaspora. It's now happened to the Christians for a, for a period of time. Diaspora, sow seed, scatter seed. He has scattered his seed of the Holy Ghost in us now to every neighborhood around the country. Oh my God. Let your light shine. This is your greatest hour. Now the revival capital of the world walks in when everybody's panicked for toilet paper and is at peace and is at rest. Oh my God. Now the revival capital is at rest trying to find chicken. I don't know what's more valuable, toilet paper or chicken. You can't find a chicken at the market. I mean, I saw people <laughs> this weekend, I saw people camped out on the toilet paper aisle and they had another family member over by the chicken area waiting for him to bring something out. My Lord. Now is when we should be resting in this because we have a hope, we have a peace about us. This was the way, guys, it all started, guys. It all started this way. A group of about a dozen fishermen and others along a seaside in Galilee. Later, Paul's going to travel and he's going to plant intimacy in home fellowships that will provide the earliest forms of the gospel, the declaration in synagogue on Mars Hill, all of these different things, the resulting questions that respond to him, all of these things will happen in homes, group meetings and houses. That was the original recipients of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even, listen to this, listen to this, the upper room when the Holy Spirit was poured out, happened in somebody's house. I, I guarantee you, if I, if I brought brother, Dr. Bailey up here, he could tell me instance after instance after instance that it began in somebody's home or somebody praying or a group of students coming together uh, during lunchtime and began to pray. God has given us that ability right now for your family to come together, for your family and that family, because we're under 10, to come together and watch a revival break out in a house. We are on the cusp of the greatest awakening right now because of a stupid virus. If we'll just get ourselves in tune with what God's doing and cooperate with it and rest in his promise, you're going to see a revival come out of this thing. My God, a revival of our economy, a revival of, our, of the spirit of this nation like you've never seen before. The church met in homes. I'll show it to you. Acts 2, Acts 5, Acts 8, Acts 9, Acts 12, Acts 16, Acts 18, Acts 20, Acts 21. Romans chapter 16, 1 Corinthians 16, Colossians 4, 1 Timothy 5, Philemon chapter 1. It's all through here, guys. We've been taken back to the original outpouring. And if we'll embrace it and rest in his hope, you're going to see the greatest days your church has ever seen. You're going to see the greatest days your family has ever seen. We're going to be like him. We need to pass through this time in faith and rest, rest in it. And as we pass through this, his covenant and his return, look at this. As we pass through this time, rest in the faith of his covenant and his return, that we will be like him. Listen, if you're sick and you need health in your body, Matthew chapter 8, verse 17 said this. Here's your promise. Here's your promise. You ready? Here's your promise to rest in. He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. You can learn from the failure of the Israelites. First, find a promise. Mix your faith with it. Listen to me. Find a promise and mix your faith with it. Find a promise and mix your faith with it. How do I mix my faith with it? Start saying it. Start saying your promise. Start rehearsing, re-rehearsing with your mouth all of the things that God has been faithful to you about. Second, rest in the promise. 
Know the God who declared it. He's already accomplished it. He's going to cause it to come to pass. Rest in that promise and you won't be hardened of heart. Amen? Find a promise and then rest in that promise. Mix faith with it. God declared it. It has to be true. Let every man be a liar. You ready?